It's a 100-year love affair. The Montreal Canadiens and their fans. This evening, a very special rendezvous as the Habs skate into Village sur Glace. It's Kraft Hockeyville 2008. The game. Quebec, a mill town which is now a hot tourist resort on the southwestern shore of Lac Saint-Jean in the Saguenay, about three hours drive north and slightly west of Quebec City. The Benoit of Sports Centre tonight, it's the Montreal Canadiens and the Buffalo Sabres, the championship prize for Kraft Hockeyville 2008. Vous êtes prêts? Vous êtes prêts? Ouais! Les glorieux, les Montreal Canadiens! Bonne chance! Les amis! You know, this evening is a very special night. I mentioned the hockey game, it's a preseason game between the Sabres and the Canadians. But the truth is, this night is the personification of a rock carrier story, the famous hockey story, the sweater, the Shondai. In that story, a young child goes through the department store catalog and sees the Montreal Canadian sweater. So he orders that sweater. And every day he goes to the mailbox, hoping that sweater, Maurice Richard's, Rock and Richard's sweater, will come to him. Nothing, nothing for six weeks. And finally one day the parcel arrives and he opens the box and of course there's a note that says, disappointment. We're sorry, we're out of Hab sweaters. Hope you'll enjoy the substitute and it's a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. Might as well have been the measles. Imagine if in your town in Quebec where every child thinks of the Montreal sweater as the flag of La Belle Provence. Maxime Lapierre getting in here ready for the game. Actually, Maxime's going to wear a microphone for us tonight. Maxime, bon chance, be great. Here you go. If you were a kid in Robeval, you could open the door and see not just it, not just the sweater, but the men who wear the sweater of the Montreal Canadiens. Great thrill for all these boys. Uh, tight quarters. Matthew Dandino going by. Alex Tanga, you see here. We'll move over to Yaroslav Halak, who's from uh, Bratislava. Yaro, my wife, uh, Carrie. Her family's from Bratislava. So I know I have good taste like you do, and so does this man. Always a great uh, NHLer. Ten years in the big leagues and a great Canadian goaltender for us. Well, Mark Denis, Mark will be in the net tonight as part of the game. And you have good taste in women too, Mark, and I'm sorry to embarrass you. I know you're fitting in with a new team here, but uh, just up the road you met your wife and have enjoyed much of the love of your life, Shakunami. Tell us about that. Right, well, this is uh, a little bit of a coming back home, homecoming for uh, for myself. Uh, uh, this is a great area. This is where I call home for the last uh, the last few off-seasons, and um, obviously I did I did find my wife here uh, during my junior stint, but uh, just proud of being part of this event. Obviously it takes us back to our roots, and I think uh, each and every one of us recognize itself uh, himself. We've, we've all played in the minor hockey uh, rinks like this one and uh, just proud of the people of this area can enjoy uh, an NHL game. Say the same thing to you boys. Who's that threat? I know they're ready. Josh George is back there calling. He knows what to do. Well, only 1,200 can be inside the arena to see the Montreal Canadiens tonight. Big scene outside. Let's go out for Cassie Campbell and more on that story. Cassie. Well, thanks, Ron. It's absolutely electric outside of the Benoit Levesque Arena in Roberval, Quebec. And Guy Carboneau, the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, was talking about the game. And he said, listen, when I was playing for the Montreal Canadiens, I would have loved to go to my hometown of Seto, Quebec. He says that this arena in Roberval is in great condition. It has great ice surface, and this should be an exciting game tonight with the Montreal Canadiens and the Buffalo Sabres. A lot of things going on. Only 1,200 people can fit inside the arena, so the other 10,000 of Robertville, Quebec, are outside, and you can see it's just electric. The game will be on a big screen television. A lot of volume going on, local radio broadcasts, lots of food, lots of face painting, and I think just a lot of good times happening out here outside the arena. I'm standing on a fire truck, fire truck 553 of the Robertville Fire Department. This is an exciting time for these people. This may be the only chance that they get to see the Montreal Canadiens in person as we're five hours north of Montreal in Quebec. And there is a reason why Robert Val won Craft Hockeyville 2008. Take a look at this. Earlier this
this year. Hockeyville fever swept across the nation. Over 1,300 entries poured in from coast to coast were then narrowed down to 10 finalists. Canadians voted for their favorites from each region to narrow that down to a list of five communities. Throughout March, Hockey Night in Canada's Scott Oak and Kelly Rudy went on the road visiting the top five Hockeyville finalists. First stop, Roberval, Quebec. It, it goes back to our roots. It's free, it's accessible from morning to night. On to Fort Basque, Newfoundland. To Kingsville, Ontario. West to Wilcox, Saskatchewan. And the last stop on the tour, Pilot Mound, Manitoba. Then, Canadians voted for their most spirited hockey community. The winner of Kraft Hockeyville 2008, Roberval, Quebec. I'm very, very proud, and we want to thank all the people who vote for us all over the province and all over the Canada. Sadly, just 1,200 fans can get into the rink tonight, but we'll take the fans even closer to the action. Two of the players are wearing microphones for us. Derek Roy of Buffalo and Maxim Lapierre here of the Montreal Canadiens from the east end of Montreal, played for the Rockets in Montreal and PEI. He'll don a microphone tonight. Oh, nice job. Nice. Nice. Look at the winter side of Roberval when Kraft Hockeyville 2008 returns. Kraft Hockeyville, the game on CBC, is brought to you by Maxwell House. It's a new morning. Brew some good. Delicio Ultimate would like to apologize to Mr. Carducci and to Vincenza. We didn't mean to cause you any inconvenience when we created Delicio Ultimate with its ultimate sauce, ultimate toppings, and ultimate crust. We simply set out to make a pizza that rivals the best pizzerias. After just one taste, you'll know why we call this Delicio Ultimate. On your wedding day, it's all about the bride, her dress, her flowers, her hair. But when everyone is looking at her, she will be looking at you. So rent your tuxedo at Moore's and you'll look almost as good as she does. Moore's, well made, well priced, well dressed. $3.99 one way, plus $25 for your second bag, and I can just tell that's overweight, so that'll be another $100. Would you like a seat with an armrest? How much? One arm or two. Don't get robbed by unreasonable fees. At WestJet, our fares are fair. It's just another way our owners care for you. More money. I want to write you a check. Bigger deals. I got a that's lump good. of love. Things are heating up in the den. Shazam! Oh, Dragon's Den, brought to you in part by Concrete Equities, Monday at 8 on CBC. Back up now. The season premiere of Canada's hottest action series. Those boys counted on 
are three U.S. deserters from Iraq sent back. The Border, season premiere, Monday night at 9 on CBC. Salmon River, Nova Scotia. North Bay, Ontario. Robertville, Quebec. Will your community be Craft Hockey Bill 2009? Show us your heart, passion, enthusiasm, and love for the game. If you think you have what it takes to be one of Canada's greatest hockey towns, send us your story and a photo. Your entry could be one of five to win the honor of CBC's Cassie Campbell coming to your town. Your voting will determine the community that wins the grand prize of $100,000 for arena upgrades, an NHL preseason game at your local arena, a chance to get Hockey Night in Canada to broadcast from your community. The ultimate bragging rights of becoming Canada's next Kraft Hockeyville Town competition starts November 1st, 2008. Visit cbcsports.ca slash hockeyville for entry details. Hockey Night in Canada's premier weekend presented by Scotiabank offers up a European doubleheader. Saturday, October 4th, the New York Rangers and Tampa Bay meet in Prague at noon, while Ottawa and Pittsburgh face off in Stockholm at 2.45 Eastern, 11.45 a.m. Pacific. Pittsburgh and Ottawa meet again in Stockholm, October the 5th, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. That's Hockey Night in Canada, presented by Scotiabank, Sunday. Back at the Benoit Levesque. Sports Center standing by for Hockey Bill 2008. A preseason game will show you the highlights of the first period between the Buffalo Sabres and the Montreal Canadiens in just a moment. Well, in 2003, Bob Ganey returned as GM of the Habs. In the Montreal Gazette, Terry Mosier had a cartoon that said, Bob, can you walk on water? And he says, maybe if we freeze it first. It's a good idea, those frozen goods. Here in Robert Valley, they had the same idea around 2002. A lot of ice fishers built cabins on the lake. They cleared away two hockey rinks and a one kilometer long skating rink and the Village sur Glace, the ice village, was born. He got off to an early start for the folks in Roberval. NHL alumni came to town. Rare opportunity to meet heroes like Hockey Hall of Famer Guy Lafleur, his teammate Ray Jean Houle, along with former Buffalo Sabres Rick Martin and Donald Adet. Players from past and present made local elementary schools a visit. Kraft made a donation to the local food bank. Clinics were held for those with their own hockey dreams. Thousands waited in line to set eyes on hockey's holy grail, the Stanley Cup. It's amazing. It's like uh, <laughs> all the CH uh, Canadian touches and uh, uh, big players of hockey, and you're like, hey, I'm touching the cup suddenly, and it's, it's really cool. <laughs> this beautiful waterfront area on my left is where they build the village through glass when the water freezes. This area on my right is actually the finish line of another big event that has put Robert Val on the map. 
The Traverse du Lac Saint Jean is an annual open water marathon swim. For over 50 years, it has attracted some of the best long distance swimmers in the world. They get started 32 kilometers away at the town of Peribanca. 26 competitors from 13 countries took part this past summer. It was the 54th edition of the event. Peter Stoichev is the Bulgarian who won the race this year, his eighth year in a row. This time it took him seven hours, 39 minutes. Natalia Pankina was the first woman to finish. It's the first time a Russian has won here. Thousands of people show up to encourage the swimmers. In fact, it's turned into a three-day celebration with street parties and shorter swim races before the marathon event. As Cassie said, the event goes back more than half a century. Lots of hockey players showing up as guests of honor. In 1975, Mario Tremblay and Guy Lafleur were on hand to greet the winners. Mario's an adopted son of Robert Val. He comes from Alma, a city just 30 minutes away. And we'll take you there with Mario later in the show. Meantime here, the Buffalo Sabres rolling into town. Derek Roy, 2003 captain of the Kitchener Rangers, Memorial Cup champions, ready to lead his Sabres back into the postseason. Wait for us to like get it and then move on and slot and uh, Now you know this is a big game. Yeah. We've always had a huge rivalry against Montreal, so I hope you're fired up. I hope the guys are fired up. Yeah, especially here in uh, Rodin Bad. This is a very good match. It's a good match. We're ready. I think everybody in there is ready and anxious to get it going. I think it's going to be loud tonight. So I think it's a jam so far. Great. You know, we got some, a lot of good young players. A lot of new faces. A lot of new faces. A lot of new faces. Two snipers, Ricky Martin and Derek Roy. Craft Hockeyville 2008, the game continues in a moment. Here's the royal lunch. Thank you. Majesty. Can we stop playing princesses now? You do what it takes to make them happy. That's why you give them craft singles with calcium. How about now? Craft singles for growing bodies and smiling faces. In this world, there are spenders and savers. But can the two ever meet? Yes, because now when you spend with your Scotiabank debit card, your purchases can be rounded up, and the difference is transferred into a savings account. It's called Bank the Rest, and if you sign up now with a Scotia One account, we'll match your savings up to $100. So you spend and you save. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Did you finish the dining room? Shh. Wayne Scotty, accent lighting, French doors. You know it. The pièce de résistance. Faux finish on the focal wall. Beautiful. At Rona, anyone can find the inspiration to build their dream home. And now you can save more and do more during our Scratch and Save on Essentials event. Saturday and Sunday, scratch up to three times and save up to 75% on everything in store. Rona helps you save more and do more. That's why we're the Canadian how-to people. Test proved that with the Shell Gold Air Miles MasterCard from BMO, you earn Air Miles reward miles on every purchase and double Air Miles at Shell. Sign up now. For the first three months, you receive five times Air Miles for every $15 you spend at Shell. Wow. Test proved that no matter what you buy, the Shell Premium Cashback MasterCard from BMO gives you 1% cash back on every purchase and 3% cash back at Shell. Sign up now and for the first three months, receive 10% cash back at Shell. It can really add up. <coughs> Used to be a rake, now it's a coat rack. Frugal. Used to be changing the couch, now it's delicious food. Nice coat rack, though. The double cheeseburger, just a dollar thirty-nine. Used to be old jeans, now they're new shorts. Thrifty. Used to be pocket change, now it's my lunch. The double cheeseburger, just a dollar thirty-nine. The boys are back. CBC's Hockey Night in Canada returns for its 56th season, bringing you the biggest stars. 
the best matchup every Saturday night. Don't you forget it. Beginning with a doubleheader from Europe as Vinny Le Cavalier and the Lightning battle the Rangers in Prague, Czech Republic. Then, Sid and the Pens tangle with the Senators in Stockholm, Sweden. Kicking off a special full week of NHL action beginning Saturday, October 4th at noon Eastern on CBC. Hockey Night in Canada Radio kicks off another season starting September 29th. I'm Jeff Merrick of CBC's Hockey Night in Canada Radio. Catch all the latest on the NHL weekdays 4 p.m. till 7 on Sirius Satellite Radio. Channels 122 and 97. All set now for action from the first period, but before that there was a special trophy presentation. Dino Blanco, president of Kraft Canada. Scott Moore of the CBC, Paul Kelly from the PA, and Gary Bettman of the NHL with the trophy presentation to Jacques Dion, the proud mayor of Village Sur Glass. In addition, Chris Dawson from last year's Kraft Hockeyville champion North Bay with the official sweater handover to Jacques. And the $100,000 check presentation so the arena would be spiffy for the Sabres and the Habs. Some of the highlights of the first period now here are Brian Duff and Gary Green. Ladies and gentlemen, Akio no Niveau 2, niveau 3. 
Peut-être nous pouvons acheter une maison dans un village sur glace. Combien ça coûte Beaucoup de l'argent Pour mon ami. Mucho dinero. OK, it's OK. No, Don, you, Don played hockey just down the road in Trois-Rivières. And Rose and Don and Cindy and Tim, honest to God, had a, a year out of your life that was one of your favorites. Yeah, I, I, live, I lived in... Uh, Played in the ECHL in the Three Rivers, Quebec. One of the best things of all was, uh, I never saw it before, I never saw it again, is when somebody would do something good, score a goal, the people would hand down the $2 bill to the players in the box, if you can believe it. So it, it was, I had a great time there, too. He was playing at Trois Rivières. Jean Rattel from Robeville. Jean Rattel uh, played for me, Hall of Famer. He came from here. He was, he was, I credentials. He was like John Belleville, a beautiful person, and uh, Roverville should be hot, should be very proud of him. Don, you mentioned uh, three of the men behind uh, this. should also mention Dino and Jack from uh, Kraft, Canada. But you were saying it's nice of the National Hockey League. It's one thing to go to the Prague and Stockholm or Wrigley Field, but here we are. Well, we ball. never give a credit to the National Hockey League, and Gary Bettman and I have had our battles and everything, but it's one thing, like you say, to go to Wrigley or go to Kamitsky Park to bring the players out here to a beautiful city like this small player, like Stephenville, uh, Newfoundland, it shows you this. And they went crazy here. The kids absolutely went crazy at the morning skate here, I understand. Just like I did, the Boston Bruins came to Kingston, and we thought they were gods. On a la, on a la pas, on a la pas. You got it or you don't. Vous êtes en forme, Robeville. Félicitations. Merci beaucoup. All right, toodaloo. Thank you. Stephen Harper is a strong leader. Who else could give oil companies an unlimited license to pollute and continue to give Canada a worse environmental record than George Bush? So strong he can pretend nothing is wrong. So strong he has no plan to do anything about it. We need a new kind of strong. The new strong will make big polluters pay, give real incentives for green jobs, and start cleaning up your air and water. I'm Jack Layton. Vote for the New Democrats. Are you calling me back? I've got this job I'd like you to do. Are you a skilled tradesman with not enough time in your day? Get connected and join our team. Handyman Connection, 1-800-88-HANDY. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow as promised. Introducing a very serious broom with a funny name. Designed by a German engineer, it's called Schmutzhocken, the dirt hook. The bristles are hooked to dig in and grab anything in their path. It's the best broom you'll ever own, so ask for the broom with the funny name, Schmutzhocken. It only happens once a year. You wait for it. Wait for it. It's back, and it's big. General Motors Canada-wide clearance. Starting with huge savings at the pump, up to 40 cents per liter. GM offers more fuel-efficient vehicles than any other car company. Plus, purchase financing as low as 0% for 60 months or cash delivery allowances. We're making room for the 09s. It's GM's Canada-wide clearance. The global leader in the aluminum industry, Rio Tinto Alcan, produces more than just aluminum. With Chantal Petitclerc, we also produce pride. Within the communities where we live, we produce harmony. With the Montreal International Jazz Festival, we produce excitement. With the people at the Saint Justine University Hospital Center, we produce hope. We also produce respect for the natural beauty that surrounds us. But above all, with over $3.5 billion in new investments in Quebec, we produce the future. I'm all about the manly experience. In the face of danger, one man. Stands tall. Is this going to hurt my landing gear if I fall? Rick Mercer Report. Tuesdays. An all-new season starts September 30th on CBC. You waited all summer. JJ asked me to marry him. What did you say? 
You've wondered what her decision will be. Run out and spread the news. The wait is over. The season premiere of Little Mosque on the Prairie, Wednesday at 8 on CBC. Back in Roberville, Craft Hockeyville 2008. Obviously, it's a partisan Montreal crowd here for Buffalo. Sabres actually have a following in Quebec, too, and it dates back to 1970 when Gilbert Perrault was the number one pick. The next year in 71, it was Lafleur Dion 1-2, not too bad. Richard Martin, though, out of the Montreal Junior Canadiens, was number five. So Buffalo had two-thirds of a great thing, then traded Eddie Shack for René Robert, and the French connection began to cut a swath. Spring of 1973, the odd was electric. The Sabres had made the playoffs in just their third season in the league, and despite losing to the Habs, surprised a lot of people taking the series to six games. They were led by three Quebecers who made up one of hockey's most exciting lines ever, the French Connection. Harold, good move, in over the line. The name the French Connection was probably about the third or fourth game. You know, we'd been scoring a lot of goals, so we had one night we scored seven goals. And a gentleman named Lee Coppola, and all of a sudden he says, the French connection strikes again. And that's how it was born. Pass in front, they score! Rick Martin got a loose puck from Randy Robert. Richard Martin was the trigger man, twice scoring 52 goals and reaching 49 another season. Gilbert Perrault, he was the sleek playmaker. Randy Robert with his speed and shot, the perfect complement to the other two. And chemistry and we really uh, we talked a lot and we really fed off of each other very well we knew anticipated where the other guys were going to be and we got you know as, as the, the, the more we got you know more notoriety we got the more we did speak and we'd come up with little set plays where we knew if you know we're checked so heavily when we'd throw it to a spot we were already headed there so some of the plays look really, <laughs> really good. Pearl ties it up at 2-2. Those plays had them go head-to-head -head with the best in the league, including the Montreal Canadiens, who they faced twice in the playoffs in the 1970s. Playing against Montreal, the guys always got fired up. And uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it was a great rivalry. I think it was very entertaining hockey. It was good, clean hockey. A lot of skating up and down. We always had a tough time to beat them. It was like uh, every time that we had an opportunity to play the Sabres, uh, we knew that they had a good team and uh, uh, the rivalry was there. And everybody, wants, everybody wanted to show to each other that they were the best. I guess they loved to play against us. They were coming in Montreal, all the families were there with them and uh, they knew they were like at home in a way. So for sure they wanted to perform. They wanted to make sure that they could beat us, or try to beat us anyway. For seven years, the French Connection stayed together, an unusually long time for a line. Their success helped make Buffalo a legitimate franchise. I think any town needs players like that, you know, to uh, uh, make sure that the, 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 their franchise is healthy or uh, they're looking at long term to keep their franchise in, in their city. And, Guys like that, you don't have to wonder about the, the future because it brings a lot of players that wants to go and play for you guys too when they get drafted. The Sabres finally knocked off the Canadians in the 1975 playoffs before losing to the Flyers in the Stanley Cup final. When we eliminated Montreal to go to the finals. It was unbelievable. There were 10,000 people showed up at 1:30 uh, in the morning. Everybody was whooping it up. You know, <laughs> it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. The Buffalo Sabres pin many of their offensive hopes on Derek Roy, their hot shot number nine. Let's eavesdrop on Derek. On, let me some room. On. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, find them, boys. Find them. Hey, too many guys. Generally, the ones doing most of the talking are, of course, the referees. Justin St. Pierre grew up in this area, became a full-time official in 2006, put some fellow zebras through some cases earlier today. My name is uh, Justin St. Pierre. I'm an uh, NHL referee. I grew up like a uh, town 45 minutes away from Rob Valval, so uh, it's an honor for me to be here for the game. 
I'm one a referee here for be part of this event, I guess, and uh, we are four referees from Quebec. The timing, it's very important. It means a lot to me to do that game because uh, I play here and I work in this place. People here love, love hockey. I remember when I was playing like Pee Wee and at home and uh, the, the place was packed and I was uh, I was young. I was like almost scared of playing here because the people was loud and uh, and my last game uh, I worked here the referee. Uh, I think the game will be uh, a good show and I think the people love the game. So uh, I think the atmosphere is going to be uh, unbelievable. Thousands gathered outside the Benoit Levesque Arena. There was their reaction to the first goal for the Montreal Canadiens. When we come back, second period highlights of the Sabres and the Habs. Craft Hockeyville 2008, the game returns. We're looking for everyone who hasn't tried Honey Bunches of Oats. Would you like to try some? Great. This is very good. It's in this stuff. It's the perfect combination of crispy flakes, crunchy oat clusters, and just a touch of honey in every spoonful. One spoonful is all it takes! If we're both not married by 23, will you make my ear ask me? The boys are back. CBC's Hockey Night in Canada returns for its 56th season, bringing you the biggest stars. The best matchups every Saturday night. Don't you forget it. Beginning with a doubleheader from Europe as Vinny Le Cavalier and the Lightning battle the Rangers in Prague, Czech Republic. Then, Sid and the Pens tangle with the Senators in Stockholm, Sweden. Kicking off a special full week of NHL action beginning Saturday, October 4th at noon Eastern on CBC. The inside track. This week, the real election race. Athletes who become politicians. And a visit from Priscilla Lope Schleep. I'm Robin Brown. Join me on CBC Radio 1. More money. I want to write you a check. Bigger deal. I got a lump of love. Things are heating up in the den. Shazam! Oh. Dragon's Den. Brought to you in part by Cadillac. Monday at 8 on CBC. It's your turn to get the answers you want from our political leaders. This time, Peter Manfridge talks to Green Party leader Elizabeth May. Your calls, your texts, your emails. Your turn on CBC News The National, Monday at 10. For the best coverage this election, turn to Peter Mansbridge, Keith Bowe, Susan Ormiston, Chris Hall, Mark Kelly, and the rest of the CBC News election team. Your vote, your decision, your news. CBC News Canada votes. In life. Let's see what you got. Family is everything. Your daddy's gonna sing for his supper. Didn't know he could sing. He can't. Through good times and bad. Why did you bring him here? Push until you get where you need to go. Some things aren't what they seem. You got no idea what Amy can do. Well, I fully intend to find out. Sooner or later, you have to make a choice. Love. Life. Family. Miles. Heartland. Sundays. The season premiere. October 5th on CBC. Back enjoying Craft Hockey Bill 2008 with the president and CEO of the Montreal Canadiens, Pierre Boivin. Pierre, thanks for Montreal being a part of this. It's obviously a huge key to the success in the Robert Valve. But first, about your family ties to the area. Well, it, it, it's great for us to be here, and I don't think I don't think it could have happened in Robert Valve without us being here. So we're delighted to be here. My father was born in Robert Valve. My grandfather lived here all of his life. This afternoon, I went back to the. Uh, the old family home, and which I'd seen when I was five or six years old, we used to come on vacation in Lake Saint-Jean area, and uh, I had I had great memories of that large house and and being up on that veranda again today was was very special. We saw a nice photo of you and Lucy, your wife, uh, presenting the one five thousand dollar check to the uh, family home charity, and there were a number of uh, contributions by the Habs. Maybe just a thought on uh, you, you're known for big nights. It's a big year for the Montreal Canadiens. Well, and, and yes, and and and, and it's. 
you know, there's a lot that we need to cover. A hundred years has a lot of history, and there's a lot of great heroes, a lot of legends, a lot of builders, a lot of great moments. Uh, there's going to be the All-Star Game, of course, and the draft. Um, there's going to be the Centennial Game on December 4th. We're going to uh, open up a Hockey Hall of Fame in Montreal, uh, a Habs Hall of Fame. Um, one thing we've been always very sad about is that there's no really, no really a place in Montreal where you can really immerse yourself in the rich history. So we'll be opening up a museum. We'll be launching the Centennial Plaza uh, on December 4th, which will be a gathering place for the fans outside of the building. Uh, just a nice rendezvous with all the historic moments and some great bronze uh, of the legends. Just, uh, I, mean, I, I can't from memory try to, to try to repeat it all, but we are launching uh, the programming tomorrow night, so it will be all public information uh, very, very shortly. And there's still a few going you know, to let all the air out of the balloon uh, 12 or 14 months ahead of time. But it's going to be a great year of celebration, and uh, and we've got to win. I mean, you know, we're, we're here to win the hockey games and, 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 and get as far as we can in the race of the championship. So we've got to do all that and still keep our focus on winning on the ice. There are all the kudos in the world. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci no. Pierre Boivin. Pierre, we're going to Cassie Campbell now. She has the second day, has so many great tourist hotspots. This is a town that was a ghost town and is now a must-see. Cassie. This amazing force of nature is located about 15 minutes outside of Robert Val. This is where the Weatuan River runs into the spectacular waterfall 72 meters high before running into Lac Saint-Jean. Around this area, a town was built in 1903 around a pulp mill. In the 1920s, 950 people lived here. And as evidenced by this old hockey skate that we found, hockey was the sport of choice. This is the one hockey photo preserved by the local historical society. It's from 1921, the Val Jalbert team with red, white, and blue sweaters. They competed in a 16 league that included Robert Val. An old shin pad has been preserved along with the skate. Some of the original homes have also been preserved at this tourist site. In 1903, the waterfall is what drew developers here. It was a source of electricity for the pulp mill. It was a thriving community in the early 20s, but was abandoned in 1929 when intense regional competition forced the mill owners to close down. Part of the payoff for winning Hockeyville in Roberville is the upgrade of the arena. The winning prize was $100,000. City Council pitched in another $200,000. For that, new boards, new glass, new dressing rooms, and an expanded upper deck. Just in time to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Benoit Levesque Arena. Now let's go to second period highlights. Brian Duff and Gary Green with the call. Brian Taylor of Maxwell is denied there. Page now. Goal. Better save by Mark Denny. I thought it may have slid under him, but Gerby was stopped there. Second team also there. It's Ludman with a shot. Easily stopped by Denny. And here comes Christiansen. Christiansen down the left side. Five goal goal. Christensen knows how to finish. Last year, good season with 26 goals, and he had his head up. He found the room behind Patrick Lalim, and he just buried it. Took that puck off the board, and again, while his feet were moving, his head was up, and his hands went to work. And Montreal has it out again. Look out, Potanich with Christensen. This time, it's Sergei going to the net. Potanich fakes. Wait, oh. shot, goal! What a move by Potanich. I think it deflected off of Donnelly's stick there, but still, back-to-back, short-handed goals. Montreal's up 3 nothing. Just a smart, smart play by Patani. He has tremendous patience here. He ends up faking his shot. And then, instead of just shooting it quickly, he waited until some room opened up. And when it did, he had that eye. He just put that puck exactly where he wanted to put it. Here with forward slash defenseman slash whatever they need you, Matthew Dangino. You know, you're used to playing in, in front of such big crowds. You've won a Stanley Cup, but what has the atmosphere been like here? It's been great. I mean, we got in last night and there were fans honking and everything at the, at the airport following the bus all the way here. And it's like an hour ride. So 
it's pretty impressive and the way the city has uh, put up this great event it's been awesome and I know there's a big screen outside so a lot of people can't see the game live but uh, I mean so far so good and hopefully the, the show is pretty good too. Well throughout the week Robert Val has had guys like Guy Lafleur show up, Donald Lovett, Richard Martin, a lot of legends and who did you look up to when you were growing up in Sherbrooke, Quebec? Uh, it was Mary Lemieux so <laughs> that was my idol but uh, I got to see uh, Bob Ganey play a little bit, I remember that, and maybe a little bit about it, but I'm more of an 80s type of guy. That was me. Well, Matthew, thanks for this. Thank you, thank you very much. Mario Tremblay in 1973, an early call from the Nova Scotia Voyageurs, and he was an immediate hit with the Montreal Canadiens. Fans loved his style, his speed, his fire, a fire which was kindled on the shores of Lac St. Jean. That story. to sell your home when you could hire a game show host. My clients will offer the asking price, but the list of chattels is unsatisfactory. Okay, then my clients will give you a brand new refrigerator. <laughs> a beautiful stainless steel refrigerator. Good. The closing date is also unacceptable. To make up for that, how about a brand new car? <laughs> Realtors negotiate for you. Learn more at howrealtorshelp.ca. This is really good rice. How'd they get all that taste in there? Well, they steam it in. Uncle Ben's Natural Select. Rice with delicious flavor steamed into every grain. Uncle Ben's Natural Select. Rice it up. New Ultima. I hear they're pretty cheap these days. They're not cheap. They're inexpensive. You cut your own hair. That's cheap. You'll get passionate about new prices on every Nissan model, like the Ultima. Now from 22698. See your Nissan retailer today. I think quality time is important in a relationship. So, Albert's teaching me how to cook with Philly. We're making Philly pasta. It's going to be divine. We add smooth, creamy Philly to mushrooms and pesto, and look how Philly melts. Oh, Albert. Mmm. Albert cooks with Philly a lot. Now we can enjoy Philly and Albert more often. <laughs> cooking with Philly, a little taste of heaven. Get inspired at cookingwithphilly.ca. Craft Hockeyville, the game on CBC, is brought to you by Maxwell House. It's a new morning. Brew some good. Don't forget, the quest for Craft Hockeyville 2009 begins November 1st. All it takes is a short essay and a photo showing us why your community should be the next Craft Hockeyville. Visit cbcsports.ca slash hockeyville for more entry details. Continuing on at Benoit Lebec Arena, it's Craft Hockey Bill 2008. Here's Montreal Canadiens owner, oh, George Gillette. Sounds like there's some trouble. No, nothing there. Listen, a great day. George, your thoughts? Oh, it's unbelievable. What a great thing that Craft and CBC is doing and the Hockey Night in Canada. The selection and the competition, the fan interest, and to have selected this extraordinary community in northern Quebec on this beautiful lake, uh, the Lake St. John. And if those of you who haven't been there, it's a great place to come and vacation. So I, I, I've never seen anything like it. Pierre Boivin and I were driving around this afternoon, and everywhere that we that we saw a Canadian's display in the front yard, we'd go and knock on the door, we took pictures and had more fun. It's quite a place. 10,000 people outside tonight in the parking lot watching a big screen uh, television show of this game. This is very special, and I thank, I thank CBC for doing it. Scott Moores and you, 
And, I mean, at, at Don being here, this is very special for all of us. Well, we thank you. It doesn't happen without you. It's a big year for the Montreal Canadiens. Mario Tremblay grew up just on the other side of the lake in Alma. He was called the Bionic Blueberry. He played his first NHL game against uh, Bobby Orr, Don Cherry, and the Boston Bruins. So let's see what uh, the big cherry thought of the Bionic Blueberry. Here's a report on Mario Tremblay. Trying to center, he does it. Saint-Jean right now and uh, I'm, I'm, my hometown is about five minutes from here and right across the lake there's Robert Val about 30 minutes from here. Uh, when I was a kid I used to come fishing with my dad and my brother right on the Lac Saint-Jean and we used to cut uh, Willanish which is uh, a salmon in the fresh water, pikes, walleye and even the rocket Richard used to come here in the late 60s beginning of the 70s he used to go fishing in Bar near, near Robert Val. So uh, if the rockets used to come here, it's because the fishing was really, really good. This is the house where I was born, right on the corner of the Sauvé and Tashi Street. Uh, where I'm coming from, a family of four. I'm the oldest one in the family. I have one brother, Michel, and two sisters, Sandra and Natalie. And on the street right here, this is where we used to play uh, street hockey. And in the summertime, in the field over there, we used to play ball in the summertime. And uh, my mother was a great cook because all the kids around here, they used to come to eat some ragout boulette, which my mother was excellent cook. So I love you, Mama. When I was a kid, it was hockey, hockey, hockey all the time. The principal of my school was Brother Rivard. And one day, Brother Rivard told me, he says, Mario, you will never play in the NHL. You know why he told me that? Because he told me my ankle were, were too weak. So I got pissed at him, and I kept working, working, working on my skating, until I made it in the NHL on my first game against the Bruins in Boston. I was in my room after the game, and I always got his picture in my wallet. I was in my room, and I looked at the ceiling, thinking about Brother Rivard and I said this one is for you buddy. Thank you so much Brother Rivard to helping me to make it in the NHL. You know I was, I was lucky enough to play in the NHL and uh, you know as a youngster I would say that your dad is always your hero and in my case this is the truth because uh, when I was growing up uh, I was looking at my dad playing hockey, all my uncles played hockey, and I never saw my dad, never saw my dad in my life backing down from somebody. And I really believe this is why in the NHL I was able to score some goals, I was able to fight. It's because what I've all seen all my life from my dad and my uncles, and this is also, I would say, the same thing here for the people in my region. This is the way they are. They never back down, they like to work hard, they roll their sleeves, they work hard, so this is what we are, and we're proud of it. The city of Alma, in the year 2000, decided to name the ring behind me, under my name, Le Centre Mario Tremblay, and my dad was quite emotional about this. Uh, all my family, my friends, were very proud of that, and uh, when I look at the, in downtown Alma, and I see all the direction, the sign, to come to the Saint Mario Tremblay. Again, it's quite an honor for, for myself and, and my family. But before I go, I would like to show you one more thing. Please follow me. This is my place, this is my restaurant, Restaurant Bar Mario Tremblay in Alma. And uh, I opened that place in 1982 because of what, when I was playing, still playing for the Canadians, and uh, Yvon Lambert had one, Yvon Cornoyer, Henry Richard, and even Toe Blake at the beginning. So uh, hockey here is very, very popular. And every Saturday night, people are coming in to watch the Montreal Canadiens and at times the Minnesota Wild. So if you want to come in Alma, this is the place to be. Obviously, these kids aren't exactly sitting on the fence in terms of who they're cheering for, but many of the youngsters can't believe their team, Montreal Canadiens, is actually in town. Thousands enjoying the game, especially one grade 11.
been with the players, uh, with the coaching staff, and uh, I I've been picking up, uh, putting the bottles, the sticks, everything. I think that the players in person, they're way like more, I don't know how could, how could I say that, but they talk to you and they, you know, time out of the ass. This is the best. All set for third period highlights, Brian Duff and Gary Green. Look on the Sabres. Gogolo with Roy and Stafford. Garrett Roy coming in, and he scores. He had Gogola as the decoy. Roy chose to hold on to it, hold on to it. And Buffalo's on the board, trailing by two. Well, so much for Martinez. Shut up. I thought for a moment there that Roy was going to be in too close. Uh, but this guy has got great hands, as he showed last year, and he just put on the bricks and used his backhand, found the room by Mark Denis, and Mark Denis really, you know, was forced to kind of go back into his net more. It didn't end up paying off for him. Randy Kennyward moved on to the aforementioned Derby with a top shelf blast. Buffalo trails by one. You just saw that this guy has got that determination in his eyes. He was bound and determined to lead his hockey club back into this game. And that he has done. He carried that puck over the blue and at the top of the circle, he looked, he saw some room, glove side, and that's exactly where he put it. Here's an opportunity for Montreal. It's Blumack, who was denied in the first back and it's Warder back and he's, or sorry, Dennis, and he covers up. Adam Dennis holds on. It's Montreal 3, Buffalo 2. And while the fans can't go, Habs go, here come the Sabres. MacArthur's got a man going to the middle. And Denis bobbled for a moment and throws it. Buffalo wasn't ready, and Montreal catches a huge break as they drop the puck and it kills this game. What a way to end it. Lieutenants who scored two goals in Robert Val, Quebec. Uh, I know it's imp all these people here, they look up to players who wear Montreal Canadiens jerseys. How important it was it for the Montreal Canadiens to come to Hockeyville? It's, uh, it was a great experience for us. I mean, even for the, for the people here, it's great to see the city NHL teams like that, to play even in preseason. And uh, we, were, uh, we were happy to play here and uh, make those people excited. Now, I know that the NHL is going to the country in the Czech Republic this year. Would it be a better atmosphere in the Czech Republic if this happened there, or is this a better one here in Canada? 50-50, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be the same. All right, thanks so much, Thomas. Thank you very much. Cassie Hockey Night in Canada's premier weekend, presented by Scotiabank, offers up a European doubleheader Saturday, October 4th. The New York Rangers in Tampa from Prague, that's at noon, while Ottawa and Pittsburgh in Stockholm at 2.45 Eastern, 11.45 a.m. Pacific. The following day, Pittsburgh and Ottawa meet again in Stockholm. That's at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Hockey Night in Canada's premier weekend, presented by Scotiabank Sunday. Happy mood, the Habs win 3-2, but that's not the point. They are the point. We talked at the beginning of the show about Rock Carrier's famous story, the hockey sweater, and how amazing that the sweater, so beloved in the province, was brought here by the Canadians themselves tonight to meet the Buffalo Sabres. Our thanks to the two teams. Rock Carrier began that story with the winters of my childhood were long, long seasons. We lived in the school, the church was lived in the skating rink. That's where leadership was shown. Strength was exhibited. That's where battles were won. All the traits you need to build a village like Village Sur Glace. Craft Hockeyville 2008, Roberville. Merci beaucoup. Bonne journée. The Habs played in your town.